Hello there, this is Brennan Marr, host of Page Journeys They Were Not, a Star Wars podcast. And I'm here to tell you about Anchor. Anchor is the best way to make a podcast. Why is that? Well, first off, it's free. Yes, you heard me right. Anchor is free. Anchor has all the tools you need to make a podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you on various platforms, including Spotify and Apple Podcast. You can make money from your podcast. And get this, with no minimum listenership. That means you can make money even if no one listens to your podcast. That, of course, is not ideal, as Anchor will allow you to spread your podcast, bring in more viewers, and you can make more money because of it. Everything you need to make a podcast is in one place on Anchor. If you're interested, download the free Anchor app, or go to anchor.fm to get started. Thank you, and may the force be with you. Hello everyone, my name is Brendan Marr. That noise you're hearing is my ventilator. And welcome to Page Turners They Were Not, my Star Wars podcast. Today we're going to talk about Force Lightning. Ah uh, yes. The epitome of dark side power, Force Lightning was first seen in 1983 in Return of the Jedi when Emperor Palpatine blasted Luke Skywalker with lightning ultimately leading to Palpatine's defeat when Anakin emerged from Darth Vader and out of compassion for his son destroyed the Emperor or at least for the time being. That was quite an interesting sight, and we have learned since then that Force Lightning seems to be a common trait of the Sith. Now at the time of Return of the Jedi, we didn't know that Palpatine was a Sith. It was never said on screen, but it was said in the supplemental material that Darth Vader was a Dark Lord of the Sith. The Sith were explained to be a dark side cult. Uh, Palpatine remained the only person we saw see use Force Lightning on film until Attack of the Clones in 2002, in which Count Dooku uses it, demonstrating to us that Force Lightning is a Sith technique. <laughs> Though I imagine anyone who embraces the dark side could probably use it. And as we discover with Rey, accidentally using it in the Rise of Skywalker. Now it's very interesting that the effect that Force Lightning has on the person doing it and the person getting hit by it. And it's not always entirely consistent like, for instance, Luke is hit with the lightning in Return of the Jedi. But it does not disfigure him. When Mace Windu reflects with his lightsaber, Palpatine's first lightning back at him, Palpatine appears to be disfigured. 
Now, in my mind, this is the fact that we are seeing Palpatine's true face revealed. That when the lightning hits Mace Windu's lightsaber and bounces back on Palpatine, it strips away the facade, perhaps. Maybe, uh, maybe Palpatine was hiding what he really looked like. And the Force Lightning removed that. Or, he deliberately, um, sort of disfigured his face in that moment. So that he could pretend to be this old man. This, you know, bent old man who was very uh, frail when in fact he was not. But regardless, I that's a long conversation there. Other than maybe it's just something that George Lucas hadn't thought of yet. Okay, that being said, Let's examine who has used Force Lightning. Palpatine has used it. Count Dooku has used it. Wing Leader Snoke has used it. Ray has used it. Those are the ones that we've seen on screen use it. Darth Vader never used it, which I thought was interesting, or at least not that we saw. And it was used in other canon sources. Now it's interesting some of the properties of Force Lightning. Force Lightning causes a great deal of pain. Force Lightning, it seems, also has an effect on electronics. As when Palpatine uses it, at the end of the Rise of Skywalker. He's able to pretty much disable all those resistance ships. Uh, imagine it briefly short circuits their circuitry. And also when Darth Vader picks up, or Anakin I should say, picks up the Emperor to throw him down the shaft and return to the Jedi. Uh, the lightning uh, affects Vader's suit, uh, the life support armor, and that probably explains why Anakin dies. Or, Anakin's darkness was the only thing keeping him alive. You know, we can discuss that in another episode. So, Force Lightning seems to affect circuitry. Also, Force lightning can be blocked or reflected by a lightsaber like this. We saw Obi-Wan block Count Dooku's lightning with his lightsaber in Attack of the Clones. But we've also seen Mace Windu reflect the lightning back at Palpatine with his lightsaber, a move that Rey also uses on the Emperor. And, uh, we see that it can be absorbed, which I think is interesting. Yoda, in his combat with Dooku, is able to demonstrate that not only can he uh, reflect it, or, or deflect it, I should say, but he can actually absorb the light. Uh, he does this also to Palpatine in Revenge of the Sith, where he is able to absorb the power. Uh, it's very interesting to note that the lightning can be stopped by a lightsaber. I think that's a very interesting development, and I think it's also very ironic probably intentionally so, that Palpatine's lightning 
is what ultimately destroys him in the end. As Ray is able to reflect his lightning back at him, enough to the point where Palpatine basically lightnings himself to death. In a rather gruesome face melting moment. Which I think is meant to say evil will consume evil. So, it's an interesting property that Force Lightning possesses. And it's interesting to note that Vader never uses it. Now, I don't know if that's a result of his arms being mechanical or whatnot, but, or maybe it's just a move that he never mastered. But it does seem that it's a move that several Sith and Darksiders have. And I think it's interesting how Ray accidentally unleashes it. Now, in my own interpretation of that moment, that is not Ray demonstrating the power of her grandfather. That is Ray, because she's tapping a little bit into darkness, to pull the transport out of the sky. Her focus is so intense that she unintentionally gives way to darker emotions which unleash the lightning, which I think means that in order for a force user to use force lightning, their mindset has to be uh, very full of emotion, very full of probably anger, and then the lightning just comes out as a physical manifestation of darker emotions. But that is not that is not Palpatine's power that Ray is demonstrating. That is her own power. To be clear, her power comes from herself and from her dyad with Kylo Ren, not from Palpatine. At least that's how I interpret it. But we also discovered that when Palpatine absorbs some of the life energy in the dyad, he is able to unleash force lightning in a way that disables an entire fleet of starships. That dyad must be pretty darn powerful to get Palpatine that power. Force lightning is a power that I visually very much like. Now, I would not go dark side if I were a force user. Or at least I would try very hard to stay light side. So I would not want to have force lightning. I think it visually looks cool, but it is not a power that I would want to have. And I think that we'll probably see more force lightning down the road. So those are my thoughts on one of the more visually interesting force powers. As there is actually a physical component to the power. I would rather have the force power to absorb lightning. Might be handy if I were outside in a lightning storm. <laughs> so those are my thoughts on force lightning. Let me know what you think of this dark side power. Is this a power you would want to have? Or not, because it's a power that can hurt and maim. So those are my thoughts on this very interesting dark side power. Which no longer exclusively belongs to Palpatine. My name is Brendan Moore, and that noise you hear is my ventilator. And thank you for tuning in to Page Turners They Were Not, my Star Wars podcast.
may the force be with you.